Folks, we've got a little treat for you. Yes. Yeah. Because uh, both of us, you know, we actually only started flying quads like two, three months ago, really. A couple months ago, and uh, definitely was a rough start for me. <laughs> for both of us. <laughs> it was. Uh, th th I mean, that little orange SEMA, that took a beating. Oh, I yeah, mean, yeah, yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Uh, it kept a, took a beating, kept on ticking up until a certain point. Like, there's only so much trauma you can give a, a it, device like it that. It took accidental beatings for like the first month of its life. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and remember, you learn by crashing, and we learned a lot. Yes, we did. Uh, and then it took intentional beatings after that because because <laughs> we were doing battles yeah that that is the progression yeah. of uh, the training quads but i thought it would be a good idea to uh list some of the essential mods that you want to ah. do if you do happen to buy one of those SEMAs for uh for christmas or something like that because through our extensive testing <laughs> we found out uh, a couple of weaknesses and a couple of things that you can pre prevent so uh you know what here's a little video i did running through those so maybe over the holiday season you got it yourself a Sima X5. The first thing you're going to want to do is take it apart. I know, I know, that sounds like kind of counterintuitive, but one of the things we notice that happens the most with these little guys is the LED panels fall off. So you're going to want to grab some hot glue or maybe some crazy glue like I use here and just kind of weld the edges of the uh, little LED panels on the sides because after a couple of crashes, these were the first things that popped off. So put a dab on each side on, of the, uh, the inside of the panel, and then just for good measure, put a little bit on the outside on the edges too, just to make sure that these little guys don't fall off. Then if you want to make your Sima a little bit more special, you can uh, paint it like I did, and I just used some you know, neon bright colors. I went with green, orange, and blue. Uh, and it worked pretty well because it, it helped me look at the propellers uh, and which direction I was flying. And eventually you might have to replace a motor on your Sima, which is actually not too bad to do. Uh, the hardest part is waiting the two weeks for the motor to come in, but you'll need to bust out your soldering iron once you've got your new motors in and disconnect the old motor, take off the top, and Padre pointed out there's an easier way to do this, and that's to desolder the wires from the board. But as I had not thought of this before our recording, I cut the wires, stripped them, used some heat shrink, and uh, reattached the, the new motor that way. Now, the motors do rotate counterclockwise or clockwise, but you'll want to match up the color code, uh, the the color of the wire with the wire. So if you have a black and white wire, you'll want to make sure the white wire is connected to the white wire and the black is connected to the black. Pretty straightforward. Once you've soldered your new motor to the board, you can reassemble your SIMA and test it out. And just to make sure we did everything correct, we'll do a quick test flight and uh, our SIMA is as good as new with the, the brand new motor. Pretty sweet. The next big mod that you'll want to do for your Sima is on the controller itself. The range is about, mm, I'd say, 100 feet with a stock Sima, but uh, with this little mod, you'll be able to get at least three times that. Here's the, the internal little antenna that comes with the Sima. Now, the Sima works on a 2.4 gigahertz, so if you have some Wi-Fi antenna router antennas laying around, uh, that's what I did to solder to the board. And on most antennas, there'll be a shielding that you'll need to peel back uh, connected to a smaller inner wire. Now, this does take some delicate soldering work, so you'll want to desolder the power cables from the back of the, the controller so you can get easier access to the board. And then pull the shielding back and sod that to, solder that to the grounding pad next to the antenna and then solder the core uh, antenna cable to the board. Make sure to have, give yourself enough length, but not too much length on the antenna. And then I was able to find a washer and nut that fit into a, a small crevice at the top of the controller and fit the antenna that way. So be very careful when reassembling your board and make sure that the Shielding is attached to the ground and the antenna is soldered to where the previous antenna was. After that, 
assemble the, put the controller back together, solder the battery cables back to the uh, back part of the case, and then you should be able to test it out. Now, keeping our fingers crossed, uh, I test out the new antenna with the Sima, and it works. Um, it's just as responsive as before at close range, but the biggest difference is I can fly it to at a point that I can't see it anymore. So that's far enough for me, and that definitely extended the range of the Sima. I, I, I love that because those are the two things that people complain about the most. Right. The fact that the motors can die. I mean, motors are moving they, parts. They can, and you yeah. know when they're starting to, to fade, when, uh, well, obviously when you've crashed it a few times, but when you uh, try and spin it up, Oh, well, see, it's kind of moving. It like, wants to. Maybe, I, maybe a little bit, kind of. That's how you know when one of the motors is about to yeah, go. Is so. that you have to kind of flick the propeller to make it yeah, that's make it live work. again. That's not gonna work anymore. Fortunately, I mean, the biggest pain is having to wait for the motors to come in <laughs> because they're shipping in <laughs> from they China. Ship from China. But uh, it's not too difficult to replace, and the wires are very thin. And if you have like very limited soldering skills, like I do, you can still you can get by. Um, and I, I, I will say one thing. Um, if you've got any kind of soldering skill, <laughs> I would suggest that you solder to the board because you soldered between the wires. I did, yeah. Those are super thin. Uh, really a pain in the they're butt. They're pain in the butt. In the butt. If you if you have a fine tip soldering iron, I would go ahead and just desolder from the pad, the and do pad, it to the board, and do it to the board. Had I, if I could do it over again, Padre, I would. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, but then the other thing is range. Yes, <laughs> and we've got some great video of everyone here: Zach, you, me, Patrick Delahanty, Tony, going beyond the range. Uh, and it's so yes. it's ridiculous because. You have that little stubby antenna. The antenna that it comes with is, that was empty it doesn't plastic. even go to the end of this. <laughs> it know. like, it stops right at There's the top. There's nothing there. in there. So yeah, by adding one of the Wi-Fi antennas, a 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi antenna, I right. mean, it goes far enough that I can't see it anymore. Exactly, <laughs> and that's really all you care about because this is not an FPV craft. You're not gonna be flying this beyond the visual range. Yeah. So as long as it gets you to the point where you can bring it back at any given time that you right. see it, that's it's a perfect mod. Yeah, because we were we were flying it out in the uh, transit yard, and it would get about sixty, you know, hundred yards away, and it's like, is the wind taking it? No, no, it's <laughs> no, just it's, it's just, just going range, away. Right. Yeah. Uh, and unfortunately, this uh, both of these had that that unfortunate thing where as it went out of range, uh, sometimes it didn't stop. It, yeah, it would just keep going, yeah. and you're like running after, it, like come back. Because it's something like when you have it at full throttle and it goes out of range, it just stays at full yeah. throttle. Yeah. And keeps for a couple, going. Of, and you know, it's it's only a second or two before it drops out of the air. But yeah. that second or two Is, feels like a year. Oh man, yeah, slow motion. Everything happens in slow, slow motion. motion disaster. So yeah, those are uh, some essential mods, and I think a few people had lost a lot of the. Uh, LED little uh, panels yeah, on the bottom, so, so. Uh, yeah, mine haven't popped out yet. These have so. never popped out. I, there's a very slight difference between this and the there one is. that you get at Fry's. I, I mean, we when we recommended that you buy the SEMA because we thought it's exactly the same. It's as easier the to get. Force. It's yeah. easier, to, so much easier to get because you can get this on Amazon. You got to go to Fry's to get this thing, but there is a difference. Even it's, though the parts look all the same except for the color. The build quality on the SEMA is a little bit better. I, uh, I don't know the, what to say. The I mean, on, on, the, on, the, on the Quad Force. On the, on yeah, the on the Quad Force. The motors are more durable. Yeah. The shell is a bit more durable. And those lights never pop out. Yeah. So, but go figure. Hey, it gave me something to mod on mine, though. Cause and and the, we, got, we have like 10 of these things. So we've got yeah. a large sample size. So it's, this is not just, oh, we had a bad copy. It was 10 of these versus one of these. <laughs> I learned from yeah. everyone else's mistakes and made mine better. <laughs>